Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we talk with Rich Feltz, a Montgomery County farmer and president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. We'll review their virtual annual meeting and look to the new year. We'll also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, or from the Kansas Farm Bureau, as well as our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and market information from Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, the U.S. is the world's second largest ag trader after the European Union. U.S. agriculture exports grew significantly over the last 25 years from $46.1 billion in 1994 to $126.7 billion in 2019. Now, it's no surprise that Canada and Mexico are the top two destinations. The elimination of ag trade barriers through the North America Free Trade Agreement, which has been superseded by the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement in July of last year, almost quadrupled export value to Canada and Mexico. Now, coinciding policy developments, rising household incomes, and changing trade policy in developing East and Southeast Asia are driving U.S. export growth, especially for China. The Chinese share of U.S. agriculture exports has more than quadrupled from 3% from 1994 to 2000 to 14% between 2010 and 2019. Meanwhile, there's been a sharp decline in the share of American exports going to Europe and higher income countries in East Asia like Japan. Well, a new analysis of independent data for November shows that reported new COVID-19 infection rates among meat and poultry workers are more than eight times lower than the general population. Data from the Food and Environment Reporting Network say the meat and poultry sector reported an average of 5.57 new cases per 10,000 workers daily in November. Infection rates among meat and poultry workers have declined steeply over the last six months, but surging across the U.S. The analysis follows a Center for Disease Control decision back in December to prioritize vaccinating frontline meat and poultry workers. And 40 years ago, a small group of innovative farmers and like-minded business leaders came together to officially found the Renewable Fuel Association. The overreaching goal of the new trade group was admirable, as it was ambitious. Simply, grow production and demand for ethanol, which was a relative unknown renewable fuel that was cleaner burning, homegrown, and environmentally friendly. Well, four decades later, the U.S. ethanol industry has grown into a thriving and dynamic renewable energy powerhouse. The RFA continues to build upon the vision, leadership, and ingenuity of its founders. RFA will celebrate the 40th anniversary all year long here in 2021. The association will look back on the milestones of an industry that grew from just a handful of small plants in a few Corn Belt states to more than 200 sophisticated high-tech biorefineries all across the nation. Today's ethanol industry supports almost 350,000 jobs, contributes more than $40 billion to the nation's economy each year. That's a far cry from its humble beginnings. You can find more ag news at agview.net. Stay with us. More in a moment. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. And our guest is the president of the Kansas Farm Bureau, Rich Feltz. He is a farmer from Montgomery County. Uh, hi, Rich. 
Yes. Hi there as well, Ken. Good to be with you today. Well, this normally we would meet in Manhattan after the annual meeting, but uh, 2020 brought us uh, a whole lot of challenges and ended up being virtual. So we wanted to catch up with you a few days after. And uh, uh, I guess let's, let's talk about, uh, even though uh, we had to maybe change some things this year, the business of Farm Bureau uh, still went on. Well, it, it did, Ken, and, and that's how you kind of bring a year to an end with, with your annual meeting and to transact the business that needs to go on, to review your policy, and also to recognize individuals that have made contributions throughout their time, in, whether it be in counties or individuals. So, yes, it has to go on, and we did. Uh, completely different format than what we'd anticipated. Well, we've all had to become adapters of technology. We do that every day in production agriculture, but uh, but meeting like this. And so, uh, Rich, let's let's talk about maybe the the, the process. Uh, uh, you and the board, as you reviewed the things, did uh, did things run as smoothly as they could when it comes to the all important uh, things like developing and passing policies? I th I think so, Ken. Uh, as we all know, back. Uh, Several months ago, we realized that our, our doing a regular annual meeting was becoming in question. So we transitioned from what was going to be a, an in-person annual meeting to uh, we were going to do it with a district format and then ended up just doing it uh, every person on their own. So quite, quite a change, uh, but I will have to say our members across the state they've adopted to technology too. So everyone was pretty well in tune with the adaptation and how we could make the process work. One of the highlights of the Kansas Farm Bureau is the opportunity that you all uh, uh, recognize those that provided uh, great leadership, not only to Farm Bureau, but maybe a little extra special this year uh, with uh, Kansas Senator Pat Roberts retiring, being a, a staple of a defender of agriculture for for not only the country, but the world the last 40 years. You're right, Ken, and I think that was one of the highlights. And it would have been so great to have been able to do this in person, but we did have the opportunity to recognize Senator Roberts one evening and to, to kind of lighten that up a little bit too. We had uh, Dale Moore, uh, who is the uh, Vice President of American Farm Bureau. He was on there, former staffer of the Senator and then Mike Seifert also from Kansas, the uh, former staffer of, of uh, the Senator. So it was great to have them to provide a left, little different perspective, but you're correct. Replacing Senator Roberts, uh, we're, we're gonna have some good people, but he's, he's a legend in his own. Rich Feltz is a Montgomery County farmer and president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. We're gonna take a break, come back, and we're gonna talk about some of those policies moving forward with the Kansas Farm Bureau in just a moment. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com and agview.net, serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information, agview.net. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. And our guest is Rich Feltz, a president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. He's a farmer from Montgomery County. And, uh, and Rich, uh, you know, again, not only recognizing folks and, and celebrating, but uh, it's a time to uh, work on policy and uh, boy, with everything going on, uh, 2020 is one that uh, 
about the time you had things figured out policy wise, those in DC especially uh, changed things. But let's look at 2021. Um, anything come out of the uh, the meeting that we should be aware of, or uh, any uh, new initiatives maybe coming from the Kansas Farm Bureau? Well, Ken, I, I think we as an organization we like to pride ourselves on our policy, and and I think one one way that you can see that is is we don't go in every year and change a lot of a basis to our policy. So we didn't have a lot of significant changes to our policy this year. We did have some language that we wanted to change regarding ethanol and to assure some uh, sustainability of that. The, the marketing, uh, we know that there was all kinds of questions come out of the marketing and, and the uh, gyrations we saw there too. But, but I think the focal point of, of Farm Bureau this next year is it's going to be broadband. And just like the format we're happy to use here, we, we look at education and how they become dependent upon it. Uh, the medical industry, everyone has more and more need for, for broadband. So, so we're going to have a, continue to have a full court press at the state and at uh, D.C. as to we've got to continue to expand broadband services. With all that we've got, had going on, too, we know there's tax implications that, that come along with that. So that's one that we're going to be paying attention to. And, and, and it's always water issues continue to be rise to the top of concerns as well. Uh, the new administration will be coming to D.C. in the coming days. Uh, we know a familiar face uh, is coming back to head USDA, but uh, uh, some other familiar faces to lead uh, other agencies. Um, but there could be some challenges, a stark difference in what we've seen over the last four years. Well, you're exactly right, Ken, and, and I think to many of us in agriculture, it, it was a little bit of a sigh of relief when Tom Vilsack was named Secretary of Agriculture. At least you have a known commodity. Some of the names that were surfaced were really scary. I think the undertone, though, that uh, he, even uh, Secretary Vilsack is going to have to, is, is the move that's made, going to be made on climate and climate change, carbon sequestration, uh, the Green Deal, some of that mentality out there that's getting, growing a lot of man, momentum, and we in agriculture are going to have to be part of that discussion. I think we've gone along too long trying to say deny it and it's not happening, or whether it is or isn't, we've got to be part of the discussion as to how we can be involved in whatever has to be done to, to, to alleviate the issues. Well, all right, Rich. And also, before we let you go, congratulations being elected to another term as uh, the president of Kansas Farm Bureau. So congratulations. Well, thank you, Ken. I appreciate the opportunity to work with a great organization and, and really to be part of a voice of agriculture that we enjoy sharing that voice with you so we can expand that voice as well. Rich Feltz, who is a farmer from Montgomery County, president of the Kansas Farm Bureau, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more. Coming up. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Common Ground Kansas is a group of Kansas farm women working to help dispel myths and build trust in farm families again. This program was an amazing way that farmers and ranchers made connections to grocery shoppers and families, both rural and urban. We tend to get caught up that things have to be perfect and polished, but this program was authentic, relatable, and relevant to the audience that really wanted to see and visit Santa and farm animals. Common Ground Kansas was based in one-on-one -on -one events that would connect farm women to general consumers. We did it through yoga on the farm events where people could come up, pet, and visit with animals and farmers to learn more about how their food is raised. But with COVID, everything changed. 
So lately, we've been hosting virtual events. Our last few virtual events were yoga on the farms to where we had embraced these farm women and the farm culture to bring really fun yoga events for kids. So this program really made sense. After targeting children online, we've changed to Santa on the farm and we've had great results. As of today, we've got over 30,000 people who've seen this video and more than 400 engagements. It's really been a success for the volunteers and organizations that have invested so much. If you're looking for more information on Common Ground Kansas, make sure to check out our website at commongroundks.com or find us on Facebook by searching Common Ground Kansas. Hope to see you there. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. The National Festival of Breads is going virtual for 2021, further expanding the opportunities to compete in the premier yeast bread baking contest for youth and adults. Winners will receive cash prizes and baking bundles from the event's sponsors, Kansas Wheat, King Arthur Baking Company, and Red Star Yeast. The official rules for the contest are now posted at nationalfestivalofbreads.com. Entries must be an original yeast bread recipe, must use a Red Star yeast product as a leavening agent, and 75% or more of the total flour in the recipe must be King Arthur wheat flour. The contest is split between two divisions, adult and youth, with subcategories for each. Adult categories include savory rolls, sweet breads and rolls, and traditional breads. Youth categories are sweet rolls and creative bread shapes. Entries will be accepted January 8th through February 22nd. Each entry must adhere to specific requirements outlined on the contest's website. Winners will be notified in early May of 2021. The three adult category winners will receive $2,000 and a baking bundle from sponsors. Youth category winners will receive $500 and a baking bundle from sponsors. The Best of Breads champion will be crowned at the virtual event held on June 9th. The champion will receive a year's supply of Red Star Yeast, a year's supply of King Arthur flour, and a $500 King Arthur Baking Company gift card that may be used towards a baking class. Read the full set of rules and tips to perfect your entry and learn more about the National Festival of Breads at nationalfestivalofbreads.com. Jay Overmiller likes to joke about playing in the dirt on his Smith County farm. But the fourth generation agriculturist really sculpts the soil to combat erosion and improve its health. Overmiller farms with his sons, Willie, Trevor, and Gavin. With Willie being the fifth generation to join the operation full time. Bill and Jean Overmiller also live on the farm and assist in its operation. Jay also has a daughter, Brittany. The family grows wheat, soybeans, and milo on 2,500 acres of side hills. The Overmillers have used no-till techniques since 1987 and consider a stripper header for wheat one of their best investments. In addition to reducing fuel use while harvesting, the header allows them to harvest even when the stalks are tough, leaving a tall stand of stubble that shades the soil, prevents weed growth, and captures snow in the winter. Vigilant soil testing helps the overmillers see the health of their soil and lets them create accurate plans for knowing what nutrients are needed for fields when planting the next crop. To keep the soil in place, they scrape and mold the land into terraces to direct any runoff into waterways to prevent erosion and the formation of ditches. Brome grass in the waterways help filter soil and nutrients from the runoff to prevent them from reaching rivers and streams. Erosion control extends to the edges of the Overmiller's fields with conservation security program buffers covering 14 acres to hold back rushing waters from neighboring fields. 
The buffers also filter chemicals from the runoff and provide habitat for quail and other wildlife. The family has planted nearly 300 trees and bushes over the past two years to increase water filtration, protect topsoil, and add nutrients to the soil. The overmillers also are part of a CSP to clear invasive species from a creek bed. Jay's ongoing passion is to preserve and improve the land he tends. He's built a foundation of investing in a better future so the next generation of overmillers can continue refining the improvements to protect their natural resources. Kansans are saving money and getting quality coverage with Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. We've had the Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plan since January. We've had great success using it. We picked up some prescriptions and that was fully covered and that was amazing to us because years past we've had the flu in our household and we've had to pay about $100, $115 out of pocket for that one prescription. So knowing that we have the ability for an antibiotic or things like that that we may need that it's covered is a really great feeling. Policy focused on taxes, trade, noxious weeds, raw milk labeling and inspection and other key issues was approved by KLA members during the annual business meeting held virtually December 17th. In total, members approved 64 resolutions for 2021. Members amended existing policy regarding income taxes to support deductions or exemptions that ensure equal competition among agricultural lenders and equal access to credit for agricultural borrowers. Existing policy focused on trade was amended to reflect support for bilateral and multilateral trade agreements that benefit agriculture. It also supports protecting the use of modern agricultural technology in these trade agreements. Members also voted in favor of a new resolution regarding raw milk labeling and inspection. The policy supports legislation that requires raw milk to be conspicuously labeled with a food safety warning label. It also supports legislation requiring all dairies to meet the same basic grade A or grade double A inspection standards as dairies that sell milk to a processor. An amendment was made to existing policy focused on the control of noxious weeds. The policy suggests government should share financial responsibility for control of invasive plants on private land introduced by state and federal agencies without unnecessarily restricting the ability of landowners to utilize and manage their property. Other issues addressed in KLA policy range from animal health to cattle marketing to private property rights. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety. That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Typically, we see pretty lackluster markets around the holidays, but like a lot of other things this year, we're far from normal. With COVID politics and stimulus headlines floating, there's more than plenty to keep the markets on its toes. Over in the ag space, bulls continue to get the news that they want, as we see all the grains either at or knocking on the door of multi-year highs. Soybeans are able to crack the $12 mark. This brought a new round of technical buying and ran stops to help add another dollar in a little over a week. As we sit now, 13 has a target on its back. If we can get through that, Mark, we open up the door to a lot more white space above. Of course, beans have had the spotlight all fall, but corn's beginning to puff its chest out more and more. We've been flirting with the 450 mark, and the 2019 preventive planting high isn't too far out of reach now either. And let's not forget about our friendly wheat. It really hasn't had a story of itself. It's been a follower for the most part, but we're be beginning to see more fund interest as we are knocking on the door of some key technical resistance. If we can break these levels, we could see funds grow their long position of wheat, because no one likes to be late to the party. This Black Swan event this year has opened a lot of eyes. Sure, it's been frustrating at times. You sell grain for all the right reasons just to have the market continue to tick higher. But this demand-driven market and massive fund buying could open the door to higher prices in the future. Could the sentiment in the commodity market start to turn go from a bear market like we've seen for the last six years, where instead of trying to protect the downside and not miss out on profitable levels, now we're trying to protect the upside and not miss out on the rally. Of course, no one knows what next harvest will bring, let alone next week. 
but it will be important moving forward that you put yourself in a position to win whether the market continues higher or we have a setback. If you have questions, give us a call here at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Otot. Have a great day. Well, that's our show this week. You can be social with us online, kansasagreport.net, or on Facebook and Twitter. We're committed to continuing to bring you news and information relevant to your operation in 2021. We all need to do our part, though. Wear a mask, social distance, and wash your hands several times a day. If you're not feeling well, please stay home. Let's continue to be Kansas strong. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.